My aunt most. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you know, not only do I get a chance to share and be held accountable to reading my devotionals, I get a chance to be held responsible for drinking my water per day and making sure that I drink enough of it every day. <laughs> So there's always a hidden blessing in what you're doing when you involve God in it. There may be more to it than you realize that sometimes what you think you're doing in one direction, God is using for you or for others in another direction. <laughs> so whenever you think that there's some misdirection going on, <laughs> I think you need to think of God as being in control and man just going along for the ride. <laughs> Uh, and how true that may be once we figure out there's more to life than just what we see. Don't think now, take the road. <laughs> that almost sounds like hit the road, Jack. And Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Matthew 14, 28 through 30. The wind was actually boisterous. The waves were actually high, but Peter did not see them at first. He did not reckon with them. He simply recognized his Lord and stepped out in recognition of him and walked on the water. Then he began to reckon with the actual things and down he went instantly. Why could not our Lord have enabled him to walk at the bottom of the waves as well as on the top of them? Neither could be done saving by recognition of the Lord Jesus. That may take some thinking. <laughs> we step right out on God over some things, then self then self consideration enters in and down we go. If you are recognizing your Lord, then you have no business then if you recognize if you are recognizing your Lord, you have no business with where he engineers your circumstances. There we go. The actual things are, but immediately you look at them, you are overwhelmed. You cannot recognize Jesus, and the rebuke comes, Wherefore didst thou doubt? Let actual circumstances be what they may, just keep recognizing Jesus and maintain complete reliance on him. If you debate for a second when God has spoken, it is all over. Never begin to say, Well, I wonder if he did speak. Be reckless immediately, fling it all out on him. You do not know when his voice will come, but whenever the realization of God comes in the faintest way imaginable, recklessly abandon. It is only by abandonment that you recognize him. You will only re realize his voice more clearly by recklessness. It's a little complicated the way he's saying it, but the bottom line is just simply, hey, look, you know, as soon as you know it's God, boy, go for it. You know, just jump on it. Do it, whatever it may be. The circumstances aren't what dictates whether you are doing something. The circumstances only sometimes, if you're a circumstantial Christian, which I'm not, but you know, it helps to hint at what God may be doing. But the circumstances, if you look at what Peter was doing, Peter saw Jesus and said, oh, I want to be with him, and went. You know, and he immediately got out of the boat. Then he looked at the circumstances and they looked unfavorable, so down he went. And that's what Chambers is saying. Chambers, yeah, Chambers is saying in the same way that you need to recognize if you're already a Christian and you want to hear God's voice, don't doubt, just go for it. Hey, if God tells you something, go do it. That's simple. I mean, it worked for me. <laughs> I mean, I used to tell people that, you know, the reason why I'm such a, a born again Christian or the Jesus gypsy that I was, was because I ran as hard as I could to find where the wall was. So as soon as I hit the wall, I went the other direction. <laughs> That's why I got a big nose. I used to tell people, I, I, I don't mind falling down. I expect it. You know, I call it the rebound effect. I'm up off the ground as fast as I hit it. You know, and I go the other way. Because in reality, it's not just a question of, you know, are you doing something stupid that you shouldn't be doing? But no, when you recognize at first that God is showing you something or telling you something or revealing to you himself, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about not having that doubt that comes after you know that you knew it. I used to do this with a lot of Christians that, you know, and I still have some friends that, you know, can tell you because they're even on, on the internet right now, you know, that talks to me. But 
I told him at one time, I said, look, if you really want to hear God speak here, you and I, we're going to sit down and, you know, I don't want to hear you whine anymore. I don't want to hear you complain anymore. I don't want you to tell me there's no God. I don't want to hear all this junk. And I would, I'd get that serious about it and that adamant. I'd say, look, deal with it. Here it is. Here's God. What's the first thing on your mind? Don't tell me. Just you remember in your mind what is bugging you right now. Now, here's a Bible. Flip it open. I don't care where. It doesn't work for everyone, but this one will work for you. Guess what? Because God wants to talk to you right now, and the only reason why I'm here putting up with all this junk is because I'm risking looking like an idiot so that you could find out that there is a God, that you will know that he has got something for you. And, you know, <laughs> I don't recommend that. You know, I don't, I don't tell you to go out and do that. You know, as a matter of fact, you're going to look pretty stupid if you do that. But you know what? The moments and the times and the places and the circumstances that God, <laughs> don't do it to me, Lord. You know, and I would say that. Don't make me, you know, that God used me that way. You know, I was so mad, so adamant, so passionate would be a better word, that I... Didn't care if I looked like an idiot. I put God on the spot and said, you know, God, you talk to him. I'm tired of dealing. And you know what? The fascinating thing was God did every time. And I'm not talking about once. I'm not talking about twice. I'm not talking about three times. I've been a Christian for <laughs> 35 plus years. I'm talking about every time that he spoke to them. They knew it. They said it. They did it. They were with it. You know, even my wife had an experience about devotionals and where God wanted to prove that he could speak through devotionals and she wrote it down. It's even in this one. <laughs> she quoted the date and time and the circumstance <laughs> and later doubted. So I told her, go read it. And that's another story. But those people that I flipped open a Bible to, almost every single one of them, the next day, doubted. They didn't believe it. They said it was pokey, it was pokey, it was folky, it was whatever, and went off on their way and did their own thing and denied that God on that day spoke to them. They refused at the moment to run with whatever it was God told them. Now, they shared with me what God told them, and I, to this day, remember each and every one of them, you know, and how mad they were <laughs> and how frustrated, you know, I was to just say, look, you got your answer. I can't help you now. It's between you and God, you know, you got to deal with it, you know. But at least you can't deny there's a God, you know, and sure enough, they can, you know, and they do. And often without being born again, that's what's going to happen to you, you know, is that if you don't have your life ready to commit it to Jesus Christ, then you're going to discover one day there is a God. But that's not going to save you from your sin or yourself, because there's also an adversary that's going to come and steal away that moment of faith that you had to know that there was a God. And that's what Chambers is talking about. People ask me, how can you know that God speaks to you? Because you don't doubt it. You just do it and go. And then one day God does speak to you because you've done that. And the same thing was true with Abraham. The same thing will be true with you. If you really want to hear God speak audibly, don't doubt when he speaks to you verbally or written a word or your circumstances or those things. Don't doubt. Just take him at his word. And then ask him. Start debating with him. Start discussing it with him. Start finding out if this real God, living God, is real. Because if he's not, you're missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime to enjoy this life as well as eternity to come. Because if you wait to eternity to discover that God was speaking all along, I hate to say it, but you're missing out on a lot of neat things that could be happening for you. So, for me, it's like, hey... I don't have any problem, man. God says, go, I do it. <laughs> it's like, okay, where? You know, we're on our way, you know, <laughs> as my wife knows. And the enjoyment comes with the journey of discovering what God has in store for you as you follow him. So just do it. Just like the old commercial says, you know, if Jesus is speaking to you, just do it. Today is the day of your salvation. From whatever circumstance you're in or even for your eternal security and god and jesus but whatever it is that you're facing and he's spoken to you just do it before you doubt it and you'll be fine i guarantee it <laughs> you may be doubting that but guess what you just got to do it